Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Yeshi Chonsa. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Tuesday, the 17th of November. Delhi Chief Minister K. G. Wal seeks to shut markets emerging as COVID hotspots in Indian capital. Trump administration to cut troops levels in Afghanistan, reports suggest. And Sri Lanka unveils crucial annual budget amid pandemic. And now for all the details. Daily coronavirus infections in India fell to their lowest since mid-July, with 29,163 new cases reported for the last 24 hours, taking total to 8.87 million on Tuesday. However, as cases of coronavirus are rising in the national capital, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal has sought power from the centre to impose lockdown in those market areas which may emerge as COVID-19 hotspots and decided to withdraw an order allowing 200 guests to attend wedding function. Daily coronavirus infections in India fell to their lowest since mid-July, with 29,163 new cases reported for the last 24 hours, taking the total to 8.87 million. The number of active cases currently stands at 453,401, about 5.11% of all cumulative count. Daily cases have fallen in India since hitting a peak in September. However, as cases of coronavirus are rising in the national capital, the Delhi government has sent a proposal to the centre that, if needed, markets flouting, safety protocols and emerging as COVID-19 hotspots be closed for a few days, Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said on Tuesday. The state is also looking at reducing the number of people allowed for weddings back to 50. A general prastav kendra sarkar ki approval ke liye bheja ja raha hai ki agar kahi pe ab diwali khatam ho gai hai hum umid karte hai ki bazaaron ke andar jo itni zyada bheed thi wo bheed kam ho jayegi aur hume zarurat nahi padegi lekin agar zarurat pade aur sari koshishon ke baavjood bhi agar kisi bazaar mein हम देखते हैं कि सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग और मास्क का पालन नहीं किया जा रहा और वो एरिया एक तरह से लोकल कोरोना हॉटस्पॉट बन सकता है तो उस वहां पे बाजार को कुछ दिनों के लिए एहतियात के तौर पे बंद करने की इजाजत दिल्ली सरकार को दी जाए Meanwhile, after months of closure due to coronavirus-induced lockdown, colleges across Karnataka state reopened on Tuesday, following all COVID-19 health protocols. Every student has been asked to undergo an RT-PCR test and they will be allowed to join the university only if they tested negative for the infection. St. Joseph College has begun conducting examinations and students are coming back from their homes to appear for the same. Light rain and favorable wind speed have made slight improvement in pollution levels of India's capital New Delhi and its neighbouring areas. Most of the region's air quality index was recorded in the poor category on Tuesday after surpassing even the severe levels in the past few weeks. Air quality in India's Delhi NCR or National Capital Region showed slight improvement on Tuesday, two days after the Festival of Lights, Diwali. According to the Central Pollution Control Board, the pollution decreased due to the rainfall on Sunday and a favorable wind speed. Most parts of the region recorded moderate category of the air pollution index. Some of the areas were still recorded in poor category. <laughs> मगर दिवाली दिवाल दिवाली वाले दिन बारिश आने से जो गोवर्धन को तो बहुत बढ़िया मौसम हो गया पहले से बहुत अच्छा है 
Delhi had recorded the worst pollution levels on Diwali in the last four years due to the combined effect of stubble burning in its neighbouring states, firecrackers on the festival and unfavourable meteorological conditions. Tuesday's pollution levels are a drastic improvement from previous weeks, which indicated severe conditions that pose a risk of respiratory problems. India at the 75th session of the United Nations General Assembly said that today the Security Council has become an impaired organ as it is unable to act with credibility essentially due to its unrepresentative nature. India also slammed China for stalling UN reforms by not allowing the intergovernmental negotiations process to have basic rules of procedure and records. The United Nations Security Council has become an impaired organ due to its inability to act with credibility, said India at the 75th session of the UN General Assembly on Monday. While speaking at the UN General Assembly, T.S. Tirumurthy, India's permanent representative to the UN, also highlighted that the IGN, intergovernmental negotiations, has become like a platform for debate in the university rather than a serious result-oriented process in the UN consisting of sovereign member states. Mr. President, today's Security Council is an impaired organ. It has been unable to act with credibility essentially due to its unrepresentative nature. But then, what is happening inside the IGN process, which see, we seem to be wedded to? Inside the IGN, nothing has moved for more than a decade, except hearing passionate statements on the need for reform. Tirumurthy also slammed China for stalling UN reforms by not allowing the intergovernmental negotiations process to have basic rules of procedure and records. IGN was formed more than a decade ago with India many times calling for the application of the General Assembly rules of procedures on it so that records can be kept and the process can be open, inclusive and transparent. China, a member of UNSC, has been halting any attempts for application of the rules and moved to a single text-based negotiation. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Democratic Movement and Opposition Alliance against Prime Minister Imran Khan's government has said it will go ahead with a mega rally on Peshawar on November 22nd, defying the government's ban on public gatherings amid the rising number of COVID-19 cases. The government decision also came amid growing protests by the opposition over the election results in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan. Pakistan Democratic Movement or PDM, an opposition alliance of the country's 11 major political parties against PM Imran Khan's government, will go ahead with a mega rally in Peshawar on November 22, defying the government's ban on public political rallies, citing the COVID-19 pandemic, according to local media reports. Prime Minister Imran Khan announced the ban against political rallies and all gatherings of over 300 people on Monday after the country recorded its highest daily coronavirus infections since July for four days running. The country reported 361,082 coronavirus cases and 7,193 deaths as of Tuesday. Authorities have expressed fears that hospitals will soon be overwhelmed as they were in June if people do not act responsibly. We have finished all the country in a few days. We have finished our own and we will also say that because it is a place where the virus is the most spread. The decision also comes amid the growing protests over the election results in the illegally occupied region of Gilgit, Baltistan, in which opposition parties have blamed Imran Khan's Pakistan Tehreek and Saaf party of rigging. Khan said that the authorities in Gilgit, Baltistan told that the coronavirus had spread significantly after the election campaigns. More news from Pakistan. A Pakistani Islamist group called off protest over cartoons of Prophet Muhammad on Tuesday, saying the government had agreed to their demand for a boycott of French products. The group spokesman said. Thousands of Islamists had clashed with police on the edge of the capital, Islamabad, on Monday in protest over the recent display of cartoons of the Prophet in France. 
thousands of supporters of the Tehreek e Labaik Pakistan Party clashed with police on the main road into Pakistan's capital Islamabad on Monday following protest over the recent use of cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad in France and several people were injured. The protesters that has made blasphemy its rallying cry are demanding that the government severs diplomatic ties with France and expels its ambassador, police and party officials said. Nearly 2000 protesters had camped at the main entrance to the city refusing to leave. The Islamist group called off protests on Tuesday saying the government had agreed to their demand for a boycott of French products. Protests broke out in several Muslim countries over France response to a deadly attack last month on a teacher who showed cartoons mocking the Prophet Muhammad to pupils during a civics lesson. For Muslims, depictions of the Prophet are blasphemous. French officials said the beheading was an assault on the core French value of freedom of expression. US President Donald Trump might settle for a partial reduction of troops in Afghanistan before leaving office in January, according to reports. Trump had last month said that he wanted all 4500 US troops in Afghanistan home by Christmas, but top officials advised against such a precipitous withdrawal amid troubling levels of violence by the Taliban. US President Donald Trump's new Pentagon team has not yet signaled an imminent withdrawal of all US troops from Afghanistan, raising expectations among US officials and allies that Trump might settle for a partial reduction before leaving office, according to reports. Officials have said the military was expecting formal orders in the coming days to go down to about 2500 troops in Afghanistan by early next year from around 4500 currently as Trump leaves office on January 20 Trump had last month said that he wanted all 4500 US troops in Afghanistan home by Christmas but top military and national security aides advised against such precipitous withdrawal amid troubling levels of violence by Taliban insurgents and persistent Taliban links to Al Qaeda Meanwhile the Taliban fighting against the US backed government in Kabul have called on the United States to stick to a February 2020 agreement with the Trump administration to withdraw US troops by May 2021 subject to certain security guarantees Moving on to news from Sri Lanka Sri Lanka's Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa who also serves as the finance minister unveiled the annual budget for the year 2021 in the parliament on Tuesday amid the coronavirus pandemic the final vote on the budget is scheduled to be held on december 10 sri lanka's prime minister mahinda rajapaksa who also serves as the minister of finance on tuesday unveiled the annual budget for the year 2021 in the parliament amid weak state revenues from a 2019 tax cut and the devastating covid-19 pandemic Rajapaksa said the island nation aims to cut its fiscal deficit to 4% over the medium term from 9% currently. He said he had a medium term inflation target of 5% and medium term growth target of 6% while the country aims to cut its debt to GDP ratio to 70% from currently 90% over the medium term. The budget comes a year after President Kotabaya Rajapaksa rose to power promising his voters development and prosperity and assumed significance amid the pandemic. The final vote on the budget is scheduled on December 10. Sri Lanka's foreign reserves are under enormous strain in the wake of mounting external debt. The government recently repaid 4.2 billion dollar for this year while its export and tourism sectors and worker remittances from abroad have been severely impacted. Well that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on southasianewsline.com. You can also visit us on facebook.com/asianewsline and follow us on Twitter at asianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.